And we're going to continue on that bipartisan spirit because when it does come to people who want to protect the open internet, it is a bipartisan effort and we're really thrilled to have somebody here today um, to join us um, in welcoming you and that is in Senator uh, John Thune. Just by way of background, he serves as chairman of the Senate committee, the committee that has jurisdiction over all the legislation that impacts the internet or apps. I'm proud of his consistent um, and, and strident, in a good way, hands-off approach to regulation of the internet, which has allowed the internet to grow and flourish. I know Senator Thune will agree that the internet has led to a more open and transparent government and greater communication with constituents. Today's exercise hopefully will achieve one of Senator Thune's goals to find ways to use technology to allow Senate hearings to become even more informative than they are today by incorporating photos, graphics, and interactive displays. Again, Senator Thune is one of those people that we call when we're nervous about a congressional overreach and he gets the job done for all of us. So ladies and gentlemen, help me thank Senator John Thune. Thank you. Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Washington. Um, I'm glad they're calling this uh, Hack for Congress instead of Hack at Congress because <laughs> that's usually uh, what happens around here. But uh, I'm delighted to be able to be with you, and uh, we appreciate uh, all the good work that you are doing and going to do, and very excited to have you here. Sometimes people refer to um, you know Washington D.C. as Disneyland East, but um, you know it, it sometimes it's. Uh, when people look at this, all they see is uh, chaos and disorder and dysfunction, but actually we are starting to, to get some things done for the good of the country, and, and that's encouraging. And I hope that uh, we can continue to open up the process, because when the process is open and transparent, you get more uh, good representation, you get more of the kind of public input that we need uh, in order to make good decisions here for, uh, for people across this country. So uh, welcome, and uh, I want to thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to submit three challenges uh, for the hackathon. I'm eager as anyone else to see your ideas uh, get into motion, and so I want to be uh, brief here this morning. But I wanted to, to get started by saying that you are part of an extraordinary effort. While Capitol Hill frequently has issues brought to our attention, it is exceedingly rare uh, to have such a skilled and motivated volunteer group focused on improving how our legislative branch does our business. Uh, elections can and do usher in change, and last year's election has ushered in new leadership in the United States Senate, but government is stubborn. Uh, for all the change that the election brought to the United States Senate, the systems we use to communicate with our constituents, the processes that we use to legislate, the protocols we use to, uh, to procure information technology remain very largely unchanged from where they were six months ago, and in many cases, six or more years ago. Um, did you know, for example, that during the committee amendment process, sometimes amendments are proposed by making handwritten additions uh, to printed copy or by simply crossing out text with a pen? Very old school. Or that the official Senate copy of committee proceedings, while recorded in HD format, are downgraded just a week later to standard format when they're copied to a DVD for storage. Through the use of email and electronic documents, I should say though the use of email and electronic documents is certainly increased, a paper copy of every bill, sometimes thousands of pages long, is still placed on each senator's desk in the Senate chamber when the bill is debated. This happens even though staff and members uh, have hopefully been poring over the text in their own offices for days, weeks, or sometimes even months in advance. Real technological advancement is necessarily a disruptive force. As you work on the challenges today, I want to encourage you to be bold and push our institution to change old ways of doing business with new innovations that allow us to do our jobs better. There is frustration in our country with Congress and the federal bureaucracy that often seems to put its own needs before those of the public. And as much as I and uh, colleagues on both sides of the aisle acknowledge such problems, we often struggle as an institution to convey our analysis of important policy debates to the public. The challenges that we face can be sometimes quite complicated, but we often only have a few minutes to explain them in media appearances. Now, whether Congress has it right or wrong, in an age of instant information, a representative body serves no one well when it misses opportunities to create common understanding of problems and solutions. A real dialogue with the public is also not supposed to be a one-way conversation. As much as we want the public 
to know and understand what we're doing and why we're doing it, input from the public is just as critical for us. What if we could use technology to make that input more impactful? What if we could analyze opinions on an issue to yield more than just counts of support or opposition, which is typically what we do in our offices? What if analysis could help us find and reach out to thought leaders in our states to back important policy initiatives? Could we find ways to differentiate original suggestions from those that have already been discussed? Identify ways for the most thoughtful feedback on our efforts to stand out over the most polarizing feedback. The existence of such tools could actually help change the tone of discussion. Finding ways to help constructive suggestions stand out would create new incentives for productive dialogue. Citizens who espouse similar views in public internet forums could also use such technology to find one another and to develop true grassroots movements based on their positions. Technology has done incredible things in this country. As chairman of the Senate Commerce Committee, uh, which is legislative jurisdiction over the internet, we've looked sector by sector at how technology is revolutionizing services. And just to give you some examples, medical patients in rural areas, I represent a rural area, uh, can have serious conditions monitored over the internet instead of facing frequent lengthy treks to the hospital. A system is currently being developed so that emergency first responders and law enforcement can talk across jurisdictions and share critical information as the need arises, something that's long overdue. By having commercial aircraft and ground controllers coordinate through modernized communication systems, we will reduce delays and save fuel while simultaneously improving safety. Congress has to do better, and that's why I'm glad that you're here to help. It's easy to be a cynic in Washington, but I'm energized by the spirit of this endeavor and your commitment to selfless service. Your readiness to help, re help reminds me of something that our late President John F. Kennedy said in his inaugural address. To quote President Kennedy, the energy, the faith, the devotion which we bring to this endeavor will light our country and all who serve it, and the glow from that fire can truly light the world. And he goes on to say, as we all know, so fellow Americans, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. So I'm anxious to see what you all are going to be able to do in helping to build our digital democracy uh, here in Washington, D.C. And as my predecessor, Ron Wyden, said, and I work with him on a lot of uh, digital issues, uh, digital trade, uh, digital tax issues, all those things that, uh, that are important to the digital, digital economy. It takes bipartisanship in order to accomplish anything in Washington, D.C. The challenges are great, but the opportunities are great. Uh, when I first was here as a staffer back in 1985, C-SPAN hadn't even yet come to the United States Senate. It was a very different world. And when I was growing up, I grew up in a small town in South Dakota, about 500 people called Murdo. It's out in the middle of the state. Uh, and for me, the world ended and began and ended, I should say, at the city limits of my hometown. You know, that was about all you, all you ever saw. Now I have a 95-year-old father who still lives in my hometown, in a little house that I grew up in, who has access to the world through the Internet. And uh, it's remarkable to see the way in which a 95-year-old guy can continue to use that technology. It keeps him informed. It keeps him, uh, you know, sort of fresh and creative and, and uh, in touch with what's going on in the world around him. So we need to do more of that here in Washington, D.C. We need to figure out new and better ways of communicating with our constituents, of getting input that's useful, thoughtful, impactful, and, and using it and applying it in the way that we do our job so that we can have a more open, more transparent, and more effective democracy in this country. And you are all uh, an important part of that. So thank you for being here today. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to stay high, stop and say hi, and I hope, that, uh, I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.